Hello, Gemma from Brush Party, just showing you another technique that you can use when you are accessing our online live stream video events. And we are going to be concentrating on the chisel brush, also called the angle brush. And sometimes this puts the fear of dread into people, but actually it's a fantastic brush to use with so many different ways to use it. So grab yourself a chisel brush. If you don't have one, you can always order one from our online shop and um, go onto our website, www.brushparty.co.uk. You'll see a shop tab along the top. And I'm gonna show you all the different ways that you can use this wonderful brush. Right, so at Brush Party, we have two different versions of the chisel brush. Now we have a large chisel brush, which is this one, and it is the one with the brown handle, and we have a higher up part, and it slopes down. That is the build up, that's the structure of a chisel brush, and we also have a smaller version as well for the little bits of detail. So got two versions of the chisel brush and I'll show you how to use both of them in different ways. Now examples of chisel brush paintings that we have are we have Make-A-Wish and this one we use the small brush for these lines here for the grass that's bending, that's snaking in from the edges. Now it's very carefree, these brush strokes, and really effective in these different greens. And the other painting that we have is one of our newer ones, is this one, and it's called Hair Today. And we use the large brush and bring it up from the bottom lightly taking it off at the edges to create the grass like this as well. And whilst we're here, we use the small chisel brush for the little bits of fur and detail. If I bring that forward, hopefully you can see. So all of this is chisel brush detail. Now, we're gonna start off like we do with the blending and other brushes, tiny little bit of water on that brush. Ooh, tiny little bit of water on that brush. And you wanna do the damp brush test again because this is gonna help us to glide the paint across the canvas. I'm going to start off with a healthy amount of paint on the end of my large chisel brush. Now, for this technique, we always start off with the shortest edge of the brush leading the brush stroke and the long part trailing behind. Imagine a wedding dress flowing down the aisle, we want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm going to start off from the bottom, therefore I have the short edge up at the top of the canvas. The short edge always leads. Light pressure, very light pressure. If I want to press a little bit firmer I'll get something like this. A slightly chunkier brush stroke. If I hold it width ways and then twist it, I'll get some cool kind of mix and match of brush strokes. Tiny little bit of water every now and again. Very light pressure. I'm starting out from the bottom as though I'm creating blades of grass. Different angles. Now these are straighter, there's a very slight lean on them because I think it just makes any blades of grass look a little bit more realistic when there's a very slight bend going on, even coming in from the sides. Every now and again I'm just going back to that water and loading it up again. And if I wanted to wiggle it at all, and if I want to come in from the top, Remember the shortest part leading the brush stroke, the long part trailing behind. Now you want to wiggle it and see how I'm twisting it. Twisting it like this as I go, rather than going like that. If I do that, I will end up with 
that. But if I move it and very lightly rock the brush in my hand, I'll always have the short part leading the brush stroke and the long part trailing behind and getting a soft wave. So that is the larger chisel brush and this is an A3 size canvas. So just to give you a little bit of a range of sizes with the pink what I'm going to do is use the little chisel brush that we've got. Again, you can get this on the online shop. I've just got some water and some pink on the end. Now it's deceptive. It looks like I have a lot, but I really don't. I mean, don't have a lot there at all. Oh, hopefully it'll focus. It's just enough to coat that brush. Very light pressure. Now, short part leading the brush stroke, long part trailing behind. Super light and tiny. Very light pressure. The pressure you want is, imagine you don't want to know that the canvas has any pressure on it. So for example, if you were gonna play buckaroo or whatever, that's how careful and light you wanna be with your brush strokes. Every now and again, you can lightly take it off have broken lines to show how light and delicate these lines are. Cutting through some wet paint already will pick up that purple on the brush and gives it a little bit of a nice detail. I'm trying to think of all the different reasons and ways that we use the chisel brush. So obviously this is the main way, this is using the chisel brush. We we'll tend to use it at our events, obviously creating thin lines and detail, but what you can also do is create a little bit of a choppy texture and detail again. So this time, don't worry about the short, you know, the short part leading the brush stroke, the long part trailing behind, any of that. Ignore all of that for now. I'm gonna show you how you can get some really nice little abstract dabs with that paintbrush just to get some texture for perhaps you've got some abstract leaves. Now what I'm doing is I'm holding the brush so it's so I'm not stabbing the canvas, I'm not going head on, I'm holding it at a slight angle. So if this is the surface of the canvas, I'm holding the brush at an angle and I'm just side pressing it and I'm getting these square shapes. And I can think of at least three or four of our paintings where we do require some abstract leaves. Take a look at Once Upon a Time with all of these beautiful turquoise and blue and purple leaves. And we've got lots of autumn paintings as well. Winter Lights, a very popular purple one with an old Victorian style lamp post and a big tree with fairy lights in. So I'm just going over the top, I'm just working over the top in different colours, adding some white in there, getting some texture, picking up other colours as I go. If you're into abstract art, this is a very nice technique. It gets across lots of colour and it's not formulaic, it's random. Builds up a textured background really nicely. Keep building it up. As you go. Yeah. Let's see if I can zoom in and up a little bit. Oh. There we go. 
So I'm just side pressing the brush, building it up. I'm very generous with the paint when I do this technique. I think it's quite effective personally. Get some of that white in there. The trick with this is not to go over the top ooh, too many times because otherwise you'll end up with one big block colour. We don't really want that. If you're into your chunky backgrounds and textures, as I say, this, this technique is for you. So, there we go. That's all of our chisel brush techniques good to go and remember if you have any questions at all if you come to one of our live events and you and you're asked to bring along a chisel brush I would highly recommend investing in one because they are magic and it completely transforms any of your grass or landscapes so give us a shout if you need us always here and we'll see you soon.